things, so just age-appropriate names of that. It's also um, about perhaps teaching them as young, you know, when, when children are young, that's really normal, you know, under the age of four or five, for them to touch their bodies, masturbation, all that kind of stuff, they explore, it feels good. It's not creating shame around that. It's just saying it's okay to do that, but you might want to do that in private. You know, it's not something that we do when everybody's around, you know, so creating some beautiful, healthy boundaries around that. It also might be... Um, books, like I find books are just one of the best ways to teach kids about sex and sexuality. So there's some amazing books for little ones that are all about our bodies and the differences in our bodies. Also talk about gender, um, talk about how we're all different, how our body shapes are different. So books are such a beautiful way to do that. And then even as they move into those preteen years, again, books are amazing. You know, as your kids start to read, giving them books on the differences in who we are in our bodies or sitting down and talking to them about pregnancy and how babies are made and how they come out my take always is pretty much up until they're i don't know i think really probably about nine or ten it's just science they there is no um i mean a, a lot of parents feel uncomfortable about it because we're attaching our belief on sexuality to our kids when we're talking about it but for little children it's just biology it's like what happens when you chew food and you swallow it. And then it goes down here and they find that fascinating. It's the same with when people want to make a baby. We have sperm and we have an egg and it comes together and the kids are just like, oh yeah, that's just, they see it as just normal, you know. So part of it is getting over your own hang-ups around what that is. I always say really up until a certain age, it's just about science. And then, you know, as they start to get a bit older, really in that preteen years, it starts to move more into emotions and it moves more into about intimacy and relationships. And that's where we open up more of those conversations. So for me, books are excellent. There's an amazing website called sexedrescue.com.au. I think it's .au. Um, just search Sex Ed Rescue. And Kath has got such a brilliant... Um, collection of books she's reviewed all the books for every you know from two up until 18 and she's got just the best resource on there for age appropriate books to talking to your kids about sex so I highly recommend getting some books and doing some reading with your kids and kind of normalizing that so those kind of things I think are really good to do when they're younger and then we need to start educating our children about puberty really from about the age of you know I mean I, I've done it ever since my kids are little just because they you know, it's part of life. Like, you know, when you're a mum, you never get to go to your toilet on your own, you know, and so your kids will come in and they're like, what's that blood? And I talk to them about bleeding or menstruation and and so that they know that that's just a normal part of being a woman for both my sons and my daughters. So, you know, but as they start to get a bit older, around about seven and eight, it's talking to them about puberty because children are going through puberty younger and younger these days. So preparing them for what changes will happen in their bodies. And books are another wonderful way to talk about that kind of stuff as well and just normalise it. Um, and then definitely as um, they go through puberty, it's just having lots of beautiful conversations in moments around what's happening, how they're feeling, you know, and keeping the conversations open. I mean, my big thing is if you get the practice when they're little, talking about sex and, you know, sexuality to your little kids, it, you become more comfortable with it. So by the time they do become teenagers, it's just another conversation that you're having with them and it's totally normalised, you know, so that it isn't a big awkward Oh my goodness. You know, for me, I find that I, I really do appreciate it is a tricky topic to talk about, but the more you talk about it, the better you get at it and the more comfortable then your kids feel and then they don't have the hang ups, you know, that we do. You know, and that's that's the big part of it. Keep practicing. I say practice, talk to yourself in the mirror about it if you have to talk to your kids. <laughs> yeah. Um so you've sort of answered a little bit my next question um so i was just curious for parents how do we reduce this shame around sex and how are we able to become more comfortable to have these conversations with our kids mm. that's such a great question and i feel like um you know for me i started working in sex education because you know, i grew up with a lot of shame around sex and sexuality like my mum was pretty open but we certainly didn't have the conversations i really needed to have and so even without having those conversations the message i got was that there was just a lot of a shame about bodies and about sexuality so when i had my kids i was really adamant that i wanted that to look different for them so for me, I, I always say to parents, you've got to start by looking at how you feel about sex and sexuality within your own world. You know, do you feel uncomfortable about it? Do you feel 
you carry a lot of shame around it? Do you feel like there's a lot of unfinished business you need to deal with? My, my take often is that when your kids get to being teenagers, um, the beautiful thing about them going through puberty is that you get to do it all over again. Because as they go through puberty, it usually pushes your own buttons and brings up your own stuff. And then you're confronted with it again. So don't wait till then. Start looking or feeling into what was it like you know, how did you feel about your own body when you were a kid? And what was going through puberty like for you? Was it embarrassing? Was there a lot of shame? What is it that you didn't get that you wish you had of got? You know, they're the things that you want to explore a little bit so that you can make peace with them in yourself so that when you do have these conversations with your kids, we're not placing all our hang-ups on them around it. I think um, talking, talking, talking to a trusted friend, talking to a listening partner about it, talking to your partner about it, how it feels for you, what it looks like as your kids are starting to move into that sexual phase, what comes up for you, what is it that is your story that you need to deal with so that you can create a really nice space so your children don't have to, you know, do that. So, you know, for me, I had to do quite a bit of work on looking at shame and the embarrassment and all that kind of stuff. I did a lot of talking about it, did a lot of, you know, kind of bit of self-help around it so that I was really open and clear so that when my kids did start to move through that phase, you know, nothing was off the table and it actually felt really normal and good. You know, like I have a 17-year-old son, you know, he we talk about sex all the time, just about what this is like and, and how people are behaving. You know, he he, we went to the supermarket the other day and he's like, Mum, I need some more condoms. Can you buy some? And we stood there in front of the condom section having a laugh, going, what size do you want, mate? You know, and just normalising it and making it not something that is weird or awkward, just normal. You know, so and I always say to him, you've got to be safe. And he's like, yeah, Mum, I'm always safe. And, you know, those kind of things that just are making it healthy. You know, so I really feel around the shame issue, it's about doing a little bit of that uncomfortable inner work to figure out where that sits for you so that we're not passing that on to our kids, really. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the benefits of having these conversations with our children? Mm -hmm. So I think, um, you know, like I've mentioned, that the benefits are, are so many. Like, one, I think it really helps them be more comfortable with their own bodies. I think, too, it really imprints in them about how they have a right in their body to feel good, to have pleasure, and to understand consent. You know, that is one of the big issues we see with teens today. I mean, it's an issue we see with adults as well, about having not being able to say no, about checking in with somebody if this feels all right. You know, so the more we have these conversations with our kids you know, when they're little, the more it becomes ingrained in them that, yeah, I can say no, and if something doesn't feel right for me, I'm going to say back off, or it doesn't feel okay. You know, like my, my poor 14-year-old daughter always comes back to me, and we have a bit of a saying, which is that if it's a maybe, it's a no, until it's a yes, which means that if she's in a situation and she's like, oh, maybe I want to do this, maybe I don't, then it's a no until it feels a full-bodied, yes, this feels good, this feels safe, this is what I want to do. So as she's exploring, you know, her sexuality in her life now, you know, I'll say, go and have a good time. And she looks at me and she goes, I know, mum, I know. <laughs> if it's a maybe, it's a no. And, and we joke and laugh about it all the time. But she's really got that in her that that she doesn't have to do anything she doesn't feel good with. She also knows that it's about what feels good for her, so understanding her body within that. So, you know, just starting these conversations sets up that foundation for them to feel better about who they are in their beings and their bodies. I, as I mentioned at the beginning, it really is about safety as well, so that when, if something does happen that's uncomfortable for a little child, that they can come and say to you, somebody touch me, or no, I don't want you to do that, so that they have the words and the understanding that that's not okay. So that as a safety issue is a really important thing for, for little kids, and we can do that without creating fear. You know, I think a lot of people don't want to talk about it because they don't want to set up in their child that there's stuff that might happen in the world. But we don't have to talk about it in the context of fear. We just talk about it that this is your body. Nobody's allowed to touch it. You know, this is, um, you know, these parts are private, which are just for you. And, um, you know, I'll always ask permission to touch your body, you know, so that they really get set up in, in what feels okay for them in the world. Um, the, the other thing too, I guess the benefits of really having these conversations is that it creates a, a deeper connection with you and your children, you know, so that... that 
kids know, particularly when they're teenagers, that they can come to you and nothing's off the table, that they can talk to you about whatever's going on for them. And that's a really, really important thing. So, you know, having these conversations, which can feel awkward when we're little, but the more that we do it, the better we get at it, then we basically just set up an even greater connection and, and communication with our kids, which is, you know, ideally really what we are wanting. So one of the big concerns that parents often have about talking to their kids about sex is that it will make them become more sexual earlier in their lives. Whereas all the research and data says the same thing is that when we educate children around sex and sexuality, it often delays their first sexual experience and is more likely to be a positive, safe experience. So by that, you know, again, we often attach this this belief that if I'm telling my kids this stuff, it's going to make them do it. But the way that children beautifully work is that if they are not interested or if it, they, they're not getting it, they just kind of tune out. So people often worry I'm telling them too much. And if, if they're not ready for it, they will just switch off, you know, that they, they won't necessarily hear it. And then when they are ready for it, that's often when you can, they'll ask the questions again or you'll start to have those conversations again and that's where it lands. You know, I remember when I first started uh, my son, you know, he was, I think, in grade four and, um, you know, he was only ever interested in soccer. If there wasn't a soccer ball attached to it, then he didn't care less. So I was talking to him about sex and he was, it was just like literally going in one ear and out the other. And, and that was fine. At least it was there. And then as he started to get a bit older, then he was ready to hear more about it. So I often say to parents, don't stress if you feel like you're saying too much. Again, coming back to really under about the age of nine or ten it's just about biology it's about how the bodies work it isn't about sexual experiences as such it's when they start to go through puberty that we see these different changes in the brain and that's when that starts to activate that there is there is more to it that they begin to understand and see around it so their education also empowers kids to make healthy smart choices you know when when children understand about contraception and pregnancy and those kind of things and they can be safe when they're having those first experiences and when we've talked to them a lot about consent and about um, you know mutual respect and intimacy and those kind of things that is what they're going to look for as opposed to a quick kind of let's do it and hopefully it doesn't hurt kind of experience so so again the benefit is that the research all says the more that we talk to our children about sex you know the more positive experiences they will have and usually the later they will delay it too. So what we, what we can actually, or, or what a lot of the data shows, that if children don't necessarily have um, good sex education or have an understanding around it, that they will go looking for it because their body starts to wake up and says, okay, what's going on here? And so when they search for it, then they often will find pornography. And so therefore, then they go and will, will, can sometimes act out what they see in pornography or that becomes their norm as to what sex is about. So we know that that can be quite damaging for, um, well, it is quite damaging for young people. And, and we see um, a, a lot of trauma to young girls' bodies, you know, who feel like they have to participate in sexual acts that aren't necessarily feeling good because that's what they're seeing in pornography. Um, so normalising these, um, how our bodies work and giving them the education and the insights makes a huge difference. So in my sex education classes where I'm talking to 14 and 15 year olds, you know, we are talking about what is anal sex and how does that work and and what is normal and what is not and, and breaking it all down in a way that they can have a conversation where they're actually getting the questions answered that they really, really want to know. As much as we, um, some research was saying, you know, children actually do want their parents to talk to them about sex more and they want to know, know more about sex and relationships and intimacy. But because some parents don't feel comfortable with that, then we really need to provide an outside information, which is where schools can be really beneficial to give them some information. But we also really want young people to have a person that they can go to and ask any question that they want. Because for some, you know, for some kids, it doesn't feel safe to go and talk to their parents about this. So I often have a lot of teenagers at my house with my kids and they're always asking me questions about sex and those kind of things because they know that I feel really comfortable about it and we can talk about anything. And they often say, oh, I could never talk to my mum about this. And I'm like, that's okay, you could try and see how it goes. And we often have a laugh about it. But I'm really happy that they'll come and talk to me about it because they need to get the right, correct information. And if you do, as a parent, feel that you couldn't have those conversations with your teens about it, then get some books, get some really good books, give them to your kids to read, you know, so that they're at least getting the information from somewhere around it. For parents, um, I'm just curious, do you have some sort of idea or... Um, 
can you give us an idea about what the normal um, sexual development of children is? Because um, you mentioned earlier about young kids masturbating mm-hmm. and um, I feel like this is a topic that's not talked about a lot yeah. and some people might think that that's not normal. Yeah. Um, so can you just give us a bit of an outline about what is